In this video, I'm going to explain the basics of scenes in Unity, as well as how you can load between different scenes or levels in your game. If you'd like a slower, more thorough approach to explain all of these basic concepts, please check the link below for my beginner course on Udemy. Let's jump right in here. So the first thing we need to do is talk about what a scene is. A scene is just basically a grouping of all the objects in your game for a certain area. So for example, a level would be your scene. So in this example here, I have a little warehouse scene and this kind of holds everything in this warehouse area together. It stores all the objects in here, the lights, the scene itself, all the objects for the scene. So this is all the, the 3D meshes. And this also includes things like the user interface, your scripts. So everything used inside of this level is stored in the scene. So you can think of the scene as the level itself. And another example here is this bank scene. So you can see this is another one. And the size of a scene is entirely up to you. So in this case, it's just a bank here, but this could be an entire city where you're looking at a full city instead of it. So some examples could be things like in Super Mario Brothers, the original one, your entire level 1-1 one, one would be one scene. And things like in the original Zelda, you could think of each screen as being a scene. And then you have things like Smash Brothers, where the entire level is your one scene, and then you move to another scene when you complete it. So the size of the scene and how complicated they are, that's entirely up to you and your game. And you're gonna learn that as you progress on what is too much for one scene and should be split into multiple. To create a new scene, you can just go up to the file menu, select new scene. Depending what templates you have and how your Unity is set up, you may have different options here, but you're always gonna see some basic ones like empty and basic. So if we create empty, you can see it's just a very basic empty scene. There's nothing in here, no lights or anything. And if we go back, we can create a basic scene. And this is the same thing, except it has a camera and a light attached already. So this is gonna be the most common scene that you start with is the basic. And then you can create your game inside of the scene. So here we can just make some objects, make a cube, make a capsule. We can start building up a level for our game. Now, the next thing you need to know is using scenes in your game, you save them in the project folder here as you create them, but that doesn't necessarily include them in your game itself. So what you wanna do is go to the file menu and then build settings. And on this build settings window here, we're gonna have scenes in build at the top. This is where you wanna include any scene that you're gonna use in your game. This way, when you run your game or you do a build later, Unity is gonna know where that scene is and how to load it. Otherwise, you can't switch to that scene. So let's just use my two demo scenes here. We'll load in the bank scene and the warehouse. And you're gonna notice they have this index number at the side. So this is the order that the scenes are loaded in. It doesn't necessarily mean this is how you're gonna switch between the scenes. But the important thing to start with is the zero scene is gonna be the first scene that loads when you start your game. So we wanna make sure this is the scene that we wanna start on. In my case here, I want it to start as the warehouse. So I can just click and drag this warehouse scene above bank. And now you see it changes that now warehouse is scene zero. So we can close that now. So even though warehouse is the first scene in the build index, we can run any scene individually as it's open. So right now we're in a scene that we haven't even saved yet. If we click run, it's only gonna run this scene. So we can run scenes individually in the editor, but when you launch your game, that first scene is gonna be the one that loads. Now let's talk about how to actually load a scene. So let's go to the warehouse. This is gonna be my first scene. And what I'm gonna do is make it that this truck's gonna drive on its own. And when it hits this point in the gate, it's gonna hit a trigger. And that's gonna run some code to load the bank scene. So basically we're gonna make this van where it's heading to the bank to go pull a heist on this bank. Now this part, I'm just gonna speed through. This isn't really relevant to this one. If you're not familiar with triggers and collisions, be sure to check out my other videos and I'll explain those more thoroughly. So I'm just gonna add a rigid body to this vehicle. I don't need gravity and I'm gonna add a quick component I'm just going to call this mover and I'm just going to make a script that continually makes this van move forward. Now I'm going to set the camera here so we can watch this. I'm just going to make this a little bit slower. And 
Now the van collides with this gate. And now I'm just creating this box here. I'm going to make this a trigger and I'm going to set a tag to it. I'm just going to call this level exit. Now I'm going to select the van again. I'm going to add another script. I'm just going to call this level loader. And to be able to access the methods that we need to load levels, in our script we need to put using Unity Engine dot scene management. And this contains all of the different methods for how to load a scene. Let's add an on trigger enter method. And now in here we need to check if we collided with something that has a tag of level exit. So if we hit the level exit trigger, now we need to load a level. I'm going to include a link to this in the description. This is the Unity documentation for the scene manager. And you can see we have multiple different methods here. And if we look through here, we see one that says load scene. Loads the scene by its name or index in build settings. And that's the build settings we talked about earlier where we need to add the scene in there. So let's click on this one. And this gives us an example here. So scene manager dot load scene. And then the scene name. We don't need to worry about any of the fancy other options right now. All we want to do is load a scene. So let's go back to our code here. So we can use scene manager dot load scene. And then you can see in here, we can put the integer value of the scene index. So if we go back to unity, we we'll go to file build settings. Notice we have this number here, the build index. So if I want to load the bank, I could just put number one in that box. So let's do that here. So we just put level one. And now if we go run our game, our van's moving. And once it hits this trigger, notice now we lo loaded our bank in because that has scene index one. Now, what if we went to build settings and let's remove the bank scene and we run the game again. Notice now our game froze, and if we look in the console, it says scene with build index one couldn't be loaded because it's not been added to the build settings. And this is why you need to add all the scenes you're gonna use into those build settings. If they're not in there, Unity cannot load those scenes. So let's go add that back in. Let our bank back in. And now notice our scene name is bank. We can go back into our code and instead of this index, we can actually use the name. So if we do bank, this is gonna work fine as well. Let's go run the game. And now notice our bank loaded fine. Now the next thing is what if we wanna check what scene we're on? So in the level exit code here, where we check if we hit the level exit, I'm going to comment that out. And if we want to know the scene that we're on, we can do, let's just debug it out so we can see it in the console. We can access the scene manager. And let's go back to our scripting reference here for the scene manager. A great habit is to get used to reading the Unity documentation pages here. And this is how you're going to learn about all the different options we have here. So if we look here, we have another method that says get active scene, gets the currently active scene. So if we click on this one, notice it returns the active scene. And then it gives an example here that we can use scene manager dot get active scene. And then we can debug it and we can even get a name. So let's go back to our code. So we have scene manager dot get active scene. And this is gonna return something of type scene. So we don't really wanna display that. It's giving the red line because we can't. But now we can do dot name. And now this is gonna return the name of it. So let's go run this code and this should give us the output name of warehouse. Okay, so there we have the warehouse. And if we didn't want the name, but we wanted to know the number, we could do build index. And this is going to return the number from the build index. And let's demonstrate this quick. Okay, so now you see scene zero.
So if you have multiple levels and the game keeps going to the next level, you don't want to have to keep typing that name of the level or the different build index every time. So what you can do is you can use this getActiveScene.buildIndex and then you could add a one on this. So say if we put plus one here, just to demonstrate it quick here. So we're on scene zero, which is the warehouse. But now if we check our console, this is going to display one because we added a scene. So let's change this from debug.log and let's do scene manager dot load scene. And then the scene we want to load, we're going to pass this in. So we want to load the scene manager dot the get active scene. We take its build index and then we add one. So what this is going to do is load the next scene in our build settings. So if we go look at our build settings again, there's warehouse is zero, bank is one. So this is going to automatically load the next scene. So if I run the game now, it's going to load the bank again. And the bank loaded. But doing it this way, if we have another scene, so in this example, I'm just going to duplicate the warehouse scene. I'm going to call this warehouse two. And just to show that it's different, I'm going to load warehouse two and I'm just going to delete some objects here so we can instantly see it's a different scene. So we have that. Let's go to build settings. I'm going to drag in warehouse two. And now currently, if we run this, we load the bank. But if I drag warehouse two above the bank, so this is now scene one, let's run the game and it's going to load warehouse two. See, notice we have warehouse two now. And then the second time it ran, it loaded the bank because that's the next scene. So this is a way that you can progressively load levels. So if you have, you know, level one to 32 in your game and you don't want to have to keep typing the levels, you can use this method and it'll keep loading the next level. And the very handy thing about doing this is if you decide, you know, a month in of making your game, you want to change the order of the levels. Normally you would have to go in and change the name of all those different scenes that it's going to load next. If we do it this way, all we have to do is go into that build settings and change the order of those levels and it's all going to work. Okay, so that's the basics of how to load scenes and what they are. I'm going to make some future videos on this topic where we get more advanced of different ways to load scenes, as well as how to check if a specific scene was loaded. So be sure to keep an eye out for that video when it comes out. And if you have any questions or comments about this video or even suggestions, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.